everybody, and welcome to Lesson 9. My name is Dave Hill. I know you know who I am by now, but uh, I like to introduce myself for any new students that are just logging on to the lessons. All right, so we've been covering a lot of the open string chords in the previous lessons and showing you how to convert those into bar chords. And uh, you might be wondering why the word bar is spelled B-A-R-R-E. I wish I had a good answer to that, but, but that's the way it's spelled, so we're just going to continue to spell it that way. Um, but I, I feel like uh, I, I want to go over what we covered last lesson a little bit and review that just so we'll make sure that we've got a firm ground on, on the information. So let's do a little review of the chords that we've been playing last week. But what, what we're going to do is we're going to use a little system here. We're going to play each of these chords right here for four measures. Okay. But what we're going to do is the first two measures of the of the chord, we're going to play the open version of the chord. So if we have four measures to play, that means we'll play the first two measures as an A chord like this, an open A chord. And then we're going to switch to the last two, two measures and play a bar chord version of it. So that could be right there. So we'll have two different places to play it uh, like we did last time. So this way we'll kind of be able to go back and forth and really test our knowledge of where the notes are at on the roots on the, the available sixth string or the fifth string plus the open roots that are available to choose from. So here we'll go, we'll go like this. All right, that might be, let's say, the first measure. When we go to the second measure, we do the same thing. We have an open C chord. And the second, second two measures, we'll have two choices, actually to play a fretted C chord here, or right there, okay? Let's go to the D chord, we'll do the same thing. We've got the open D, and we've also got two choices here, the, the fretted D on the fifth string, or the fretted D on the sixth string. We go to the E chord, of course, we've got the low E, and we've also got this choice here, on the seventh fret of the A string, or way up here, we'll probably won't, won't use that one because it's so difficult to play that high up. And then finally, the open G, we can of course play it there, but now we also of course can play it here. And way up here at the 10th fret on the uh, fifth string root. Okay, so let's try that out with a little shuffle groove here. Okay, this is just a little warm up and a review to make sure that you guys are learning this information. So here we go. I'll start my drum machine, then I'll get out of the way so you can see the progression. Okay, here we go. Let me slow it down a little bit. How's that feel? I think it feels pretty good. Okay, here we go. Open chords, first two measures, fretted chords, the next two measures. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Here we go, open. Threaded. Open. Threaded. exercise to get your hands used to going between the open chords and the fretted chords that we now know. We're going to give you some more fretted chords in a minute, but I just wanted to review what we've covered up till now with the open and the fretted bar chord shapes. Okay, so let's take a look now 
and review or learn something actually new uh, in another bar chord form. Okay, and this is going to really help us out because now we're going to get yet another voicing to play and move around the neck. Okay, so you can see I've written, drawn out an open C chord form. Very, very uh, usable chord in a lot of folk songs and just any kind of music where you'd want an open C chord. You want the open E ringing and the G ringing, of course, that's a great chord. Now, what happens when we want to go to D flat? Here's, the, here's what would happen if we talk, took that chord up a half step. Not a very pleasant chord, right? Doesn't really have the right open strings here, okay? But I think you can figure out what we're going to have to do here. We have to replace the two open strings here by using a, a bar to create that nut. So we're going to bar right here and then essentially play the rest of the notes uh, by fingering the chord, not like this, but like this, four, three, two, and then bar the top two strings, and we get a movable C, C form that originated here, and now is usable like this. Okay, so that's a very useful chord, and, and also what we're going to have to rely on is the knowledge of the roots on the A string, just like we did with this form. Okay, so it's convenient because we already know the roots on the A string, but now we have a different voicing of, uh, of the root chord with the root on the A string, and it's going to be tracked down with our root on the fourth finger there, okay? So if we wanted to play, let's say, C major to F major, now we know, okay, we know F is right here, so we simply put our fourth finger on the F. We got another voicing to groove. Of course, we could have played this one. But you gotta admit, it sounds a little different when we play the open chord here. And we play the same voicing up here with a with a bar chord. The, the, Consistency in the sound of the chords is, is better because the notes are in the same order. Okay, so that's a, a major, a movable major bar chord from the C shape. Okay, so we're going to combine those in some progressions here in just a minute. Okay, so here we are again, and uh, I've taken a little second here to write out a, a nice chord progression that I thought we could utilize some of the new chords that we've been working on, and also just a little bit longer song form to hear how they could all fit together. Okay, because ultimately the purpose of having a lot of uh, varieties of chord voicings to choose from is that you can keep a chord progression interesting as you play it over the course of the whole song. You have a variety of chords that you can bring into the song that make it sound interesting the longer that you listen to it. So take a look at our progression behind us here. Um, I know we know all these chords now, and we can play them in a variety of different spots. So what I, what I did I th that I thought was interesting is I made a, a simple little progression on my loop station, and I recorded one track of guitar chords with the bass of the drums that just lays down the chords. Okay, So let's just go through it right now and play along with my track, and then we're going to talk about ways we can make it interesting with an additional second guitar part that you're going to help me come up with. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and check out some of our chords uh, along the way here. Remember that we've learned, we learned a, new C, a, a lear, new, learned a new C shape that we can move up to the F chord now like this. We can play it on a G form like this. Okay, sometimes this voicing right here is nice to go back and forth like I've shown you before. So we've got that. Coming into the, uh, after the third ending here, we have this rhythm that I can show you how to play. It's gonna be like this. One, two, three, four. Okay. We could also play it like this. But I want you to try out the new voicing that I've shown you. Okay. Um, 
We can also play the A flat chord now instead of here. We can play it up here. And then move it down to the F chord here. Okay, so why don't you try that on the A flat chord? Okay, of course you can play the A flat chord here. That's another option too, but it's nice to have options like I've told you. Okay, and then of course you can play the G flat chord. You can see there's two bars. So let's put that in there as well, or down here. Okay, so let's see what it sounds like here with the progression. Here's what the groove is going to feel like.